In this video, we'll use pedigrees to trace X-linked dominant traits through generations in a family. An example of an X-linked dominant disorder is hypophosphatemia, which is characterized by low levels of phosphate in the blood. When we're dealing with an X-linked trait, that means that the gene associated with the trait is located on the X chromosome. And we remember that males have one X chromosome paired with a Y chromosome, while females have two X chromosomes. So let's say we have this gene on the X chromosome, and it has a dominant allele and a recessive allele. When dealing with an X-linked dominant trait, a male with the dominant allele will be affected, while a male with the recessive allele will be unaffected. A female will be affected if she is either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. A homozygous recessive female will be unaffected. Let's take a look at some pedigrees to learn the rules of X-linked dominant inheritance. First, if you have an affected male, all of his female offspring must also be affected. An affected male has the dominant X-linked allele and he passes it on to all of his female children. His male children receive his Y allele. Along the same lines, an affected female may have affected or unaffected children. If she is heterozygous, she could pass on the dominant allele or the recessive allele to her children, resulting in some being affected and some being unaffected. That said, if a female is unaffected, none of her sons can be affected. She passes on the recessive allele to her sons, which means they would all be unaffected like she is. With those rules in mind, let's take a look at some practice pedigrees to see if we can tell if the trait in the pedigree is inherited in an X-linked dominant manner. Okay, so here we see an affected male who has all affected daughters but no affected sons. That's what we would expect with an X-linked dominant inheritance, as he passes on his dominant X to his daughters, but his sons receive their single X from their mother, who in this case is unaffected and therefore has two recessive alleles. And when we look at this subfamily, we see an affected mother, who would be heterozygous, and an unaffected father. These parents have some affected children and some unaffected children. This is a product of the female parent passing on either her dominant or her recessive X allele. And over here, we have two unaffected parents having unaffected children, which would be true if these parents have recessive X alleles. So overall, this pedigree is an excellent example of the X-linked dominant mode of inheritance. Now let's take a look at this pedigree. Is the trait in this pedigree inherited in an X-linked dominant manner? Automatically, my eye is drawn to this subfamily. This affected male has unaffected female children. If this were a trait that were inherited in an X-linked dominant mode, then this father would carry the dominant X allele, which he would pass on to his daughters, that would make them appear affected as well. As they are not in this pedigree, we know that this pedigree must be showing a trait that is inherited by some other mode of inheritance. So now you should feel comfortable determining if a trait in a pedigree is inherited in an X-linked dominant manner. If you'd like to learn more, see my videos on tracing other modes of inheritance in pedigrees, like X-linked recessive and autosomal traits.